very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That's, I've got for it. Thank you. It's been really exciting, this process. I've, as you can see, I've had the pleasure of working with really great people from beginning to end. Uh, you know, it was one of those rare experiences where you actually just get a script and it's actually good. You know, somebody said, this is the best script we have at Warner Brothers. And I thought, like, oh, this is the last three times they told me it was the best <laughs> script at Warner Brothers. And then it actually was the best script. A guy named Chris Terrier wrote it, who's an amazing writer. Um, he had found a way to kind of take this true story that was unwieldy and episodic and complicated and weird and you wouldn't believe it and to turn it into a kind of a three-act structure and hold on to the essential truth. If we're going to go, then we need to go now. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. A lot of people were playing real people. I was playing an absolute real person. He was a, an a American hero. He won the Intelligence Star. So the burden to get that right is very serious, as well as the CIA allowed us to use their facilities to shoot in. But mostly it was Tony and Tony's life and him having opened himself up to us that gave me an added sense of responsibility to try to get his story and tell it right and make a movie that he would like. And that was the one real challenge I knew going in. How do I manage these tones? How does it not feel like three separate films? And if the comedy was too funny or too goofy or too cheeky or winked at the audience, then you wouldn't take the reality of the movie seriously. And so what really, as it often does, came down to acting. You want to set up a movie in a week. You want to lie to Hollywood, a town where everybody lies for a living. And you're going to walk the Brady Bunch out of the most watched city in the world. That's right. We did suicide missions in the army that had better odds than this. The two actors who played the mostly comic material, they never played comedy. They just played it for the truth. And a lot of times it was really funny, but what it always was, was real. And because it was always real, and because John and Alan are so, so gifted, so profoundly gifted, yeah. I was able to sort of sit back and look good because these guys were doing such a good job at not kind of upending the rest of the movie while being really, really funny and real. How about the horses of Achilles? No good. Nobody does westerns anymore. It's ancient Troy. If it's got horses in it, it's a western. It doesn't matter. It's a fake movie. If I'm doing a fake movie, it's going to be a fake hit. I thought for a while I was playing one guy and then they told me I was playing a composite and I went, it was very hard. <laughs> I mean, how do you play a composite guy? <laughs> no, I, I just based it on what I remembered of Jack Warner. There was a big party at uh, Warner's one day. This little tiny man walks over to me and he said, Hi, he says, I'm, uh, my name is Jack. He says, I own this building. <laughs> I, said, I, I said, oh, that's, that's nice. <laughs> it was Jack Warner. <laughs> you really know Warren Beatty? Yes, I do. I took a leak next to him once at the Golden Globes. I remember very clearly that whole period, but uh, I'd, I'd never heard of this. He says the Minotaur prosthetic is too tight, so he can't act. If he could act, he wouldn't be playing the Minotaur. <laughs> I talked to Tony about him, and he did a lot of work for the CIA, and it's nice, you know, that he could be recognized. So you want to come to Hollywood and act like a big shot? Yeah. Without actually doing anything? No. You'll fit right in. I think when you start out as an actor, you look to other performances and performers as models. Both of these guys were part of moments and movies and scenes that made me want to do this. So it's like one of those extra bonuses as a director when you get to work with people, particularly because I'm an actor director who were my kind of, you know, uh, and I continue to be my kind of actor heroes. But I have to play it cool on the set, you know. <laughs> yeah. There was a sequence that I really uh, learned from Ben, and we were in a basement. So there were no windows anywhere, and all these desks and everything, and it was a circuitous route that he chose to go from point A to point B, when if you looked at the actual geography of that room, it would be simpler just to walk straight. And he, he would go this way and go that way, and it was like, it's a curious thing, let me see how this comes out. No, I'm not, I'm not busting your chops. I'm Doesn't make me sound like an actor's director, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> walk in circles, just trust me. <laughs> and it came out so much better than I could have imagined. And I'm going to steal that the next time I direct Breaking Bad. <laughs> You've got revolutionary guards going door to door like Jehovah's Witnesses. I think the most interesting thing I found at Langley was the food court. Uh, there's the there's the subway, there's the Burger King, and everything. It's like really. And then you start thinking about it, you realize, well, of course they can't send out for pizza. There's not a guy delivering. It. Domino's doesn't make that drive. 
but there was top security, and I mean top. When we were working there, they said, all phones off. Uh, okay, right, yeah, yeah, and the, and the CIA police are walking around, and two police officers came around the corner once, and I said, is everything okay? And he said, yeah, these, there's, uh, there's a Samsung phone, phone on in one of these two gentlemen's pockets. And I went, <laughs> But the, the fact that he knew the brand and exactly where it was through the electron... Uh, so it's a little... It's, it's a very interesting culture to dive into, but it was uh, quite an eye-opener being out there, talking to CIA officers who are used to not discussing much, so you have to kind of pry. And so I would say, so what was it like when you left, uh, you know, your spouse for so long? It was um, difficult at times. You know, that's like, but what exactly, I mean, when you come home after four months, uh, was there strain and how, how, did you, how did you survive a marriage knowing that you can't come home and tell your spouse, male or female, whatever the case may be, what happened on your business trip? And he goes, my marriages didn't survive. <laughs> so here's the way that this, that this is going to work. Ben had us all in the house that we shot in for um, a week. And we couldn't leave, we couldn't have phones, we didn't have computers. We had movies from the 70s to watch, newspapers, magazines, but we had no contact with the outside world and basically a very comfortable simulated version of what these people went through. It was a bit of a reality show, I think, the Argo reality show. When we got out of there, I actually felt a sense of culture shock, actually, after a week. I don't know how you felt. I was fine. <laughs> I spent a lot of time casting the extras, the people in the embassy takeover, talking to them about why they were doing it, making sure they could speak the Farsi they needed to speak. I gave a bunch of them Super 8 cameras, and so they were shooting some of the stuff that we used, you know, and it, it looked, you know, like amateur and jerry-rigged, and it was perfect. And getting these folks, like, invested in the actual story and ha having them be performers and trying to give that a, a sense of life, I think was what was most interesting about it to me. People just did amazing things like some woman who has no lines, has no part, nothing in the movie. All of a sudden we pan over to her, she's like, tears are in her eyes, she's crying with fear because she thinks she's gonna get killed because they're Americans trying to get to America. It's like, I didn't do that. You know what I mean? I just t told these people that their performances were gonna be valued and that we were paying attention and all of a sudden all these actors did great stuff. had one guy where the guy takes the passports and is like, sends us to the side, you know, and then goes over, he makes the phone call to these guys and then comes out. I just loved like something about how real he was. You know, he looked in his eyes and I remember Cleo was like, this guy scares the shit out of me, you know? <laughs> and I thought like, I, I think I might have to put this guy in. It was the like, you're gonna, you know, the, the like Hoosiers moment. Like, you're gonna be quarterback today. <laughs> I went over to the guy and I was like, Farshad, I gotta ask you a question, come here, come here, come here. I was like, do you see these sides, the pages? And he was like, yeah, yes, okay. I was like, can you do this? And he was just like, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, I hope you can. Khudafiz, zaman ish gozasht. Zaman ish shah gozasht, shuman bahash miri. Hamatu. Hich kudum yinu vizay kar na daran. Nega kardi? Nega kardi ya na? Ba, ba. And Farshad came in and was fabulous. And I and Rory at one point was like, this guy's the Persian Brando. It was like, <laughs> it was oh, no. My whole theory of directing is to uh, make it simple and allow for the actors to, and, and the writing to make the movie good and just don't get in the way. I've worked with so many directors where I felt like they were constantly sort of stepping on what was good about the movie, which was like, you get this really good performer and this is kind of a good line and just shoot it. You know, you don't have to, like tap dance around that so just and maybe it's workman like directing but that's what i was interested in and so for me the shots were set up and designed to most fully realize the potential of the performers he loses it's our lives and his life too people in this country make big sacrifices and offer a lot of themselves for something that is a lot bigger than themselves and they get no personal reward for that and that is stirring they're just gonna give me an award and then they're gonna take it back. That's right. If we wanted applause, we'd have joined the circus. I liked the sort of poignancy of a guy who knew, yeah, on some level because of what the CIA did a long time ago. Now we got people in trouble and I gotta get them out, but now my job is to go get them out. And that's what I'm gonna do. Now, Carter said you were a great American. Great American what? 
Get inside. 